was a girl in her father's garden. A gentleman came passing by. He stopped for a while and he gazed upon her. And he said, fair lady, would you fancy I? I am no lady, just a poor girl, a poor man's daughter of low degree. Therefore, young man, choose another sweetheart, for I'm not prepared to wed with thee. Seven years since I had the sweetheart, and seven more since I did her see, and seven more will I wait upon him, for if he is alive, he'll come home to me. If he is sick, then I wish him better, and if he's dead, then I'll wish him rest. But if he's alive, I will wait upon him, for he is the young man I do love the best. Seven years since you had the sweetheart, and seven more since you did him see. And seven more will you wait upon him? Perhaps that young man you ne'er will see. He put his hand down into his pocket. His worn fingers were thin and small. And up between them he pulled the gold ring. And when she saw it, down did she fall. He picked her up, bottle in his arms, and gave her kisses most tenderly, saying, I'm your love and your single sailor, who's come home to from sea for to win with thee. If you're my love and single sailor, your face and features look strange to me. Ah, but seven years on the raging sea, love, makes great alterations between you and me. Always are changing and rearranging the things we knew where we reached our prime and lost forever beyond recover our men and places in the midst of time. Oh, Master Hearn. For him we'd learn no lessons well for good recall. But now where he and Blackboard once stood, there's wear and groceries wall to wall. Poor Johnny Balls, he had his cross, but we young brats did make it worse. We followed after fell with laughter when our impudence did make him curse. To the mill of rags with corn in bags, fine horses daily they did ply. Where Michael Roach held his parliament and poured forth his wisdom from on high. And if your horse is sure lost, then to the forge you could straight repair. Where John Parl the smith, so full of wit, new shoes would fit without a care. 
Shun karma stations that lost to our nation Like hundreds more it was forced to close And that place of joy I recall as a boy Is deserted now but for hares and crows I remember when it was full of men And the beat sprung's clang over laughter rose as we loaded the beat to make sugar sweet and drank whiskey neat when the factory closed. And then there's a man, forget it you can, like desperate Dan, I remember him. Any work he could take, drink porter or black, shear sheep make a stack, that was Big Jim. And little John likewise has gone, though his fight goes on for our country won. Though his back wasn't straight, his heart was great, never gave the bait to anyone. So there's my song of days bygone, and memories fond well worth recall. Of men and places that by their graces have left their traces upon us all. There was a lord who lived in the town. He had a lovely and But when her parents came to know, they swore they'd ban him from the island. The maid she knew that her heart would break where she So straight away <coughs> to her love she goes into his room to wake him. Saying, Arise, my love, and go. This very night you will be taken. I overheard my parents say, in spite of me, they would transport you. So I wish to God I'd gone before you. They both sat down upon the bed, just for the sight of one half hour. And either speak as down their cheeks the tears did shower she laid her head upon his breast around his neck a 
her arms and twine them. Not a lord or you are her I'll wait for you, my own Matai. such good money on a California farm. Six pounds, or was it seven, we sent last part of the day, which is long, long to live it, and the children is okay. God is good, none better, and the devil might be worse. Each month there comes a letter with something for the poor. And the old man's heart rejoices when I read that they're doing fine. All to hear their voices and feel their hands in mine. To see the cattle driving and the young ones making hay. It is a lonely land to live in when the children is away. When the shadows do be falling on the old man there and me, I can't help from calling. Come in, children, for your hay. I can almost see them coming, Mary Kate and little Con. Abarak, I'm a foolish woman. Should they're all grown up and gone. That our sins may be forgiven, and not one go astray. You know, I'll hardly stay in heaven if them children was away. <coughs> Not the other reggae, Koshkun, not you, not 
Championship of Ireland, Clan Cork with a disappointed car to finish the last game. We sent a car to telegram seeking a postponement as our pastor Canon Dorn had been called to God on high, asking for a little time out of respect for his dying until the week on Sunday, but this they did deny. We would not play till after. We buried our loved pastor, who glorified his master for over fifty years. In the cemetery we laid him, and then we went and played him, determined for to bet him with the bold chandeliers. That day it was most charming, Cork and Wexford cross come on, all dressed up in their uniforms before us did appear. The play game that Sunday, and if on with some Monday, just two years off the century, and the bold chandeliers. Oh, At forty minutes after one, when this great game it had begun, the cartmen won the toss, and the trailer buys the tame, and while the wind was high, their experiments did try. And with the castle bridge men played a fast and thrilling game. The ball went up and down, back and forward, all around. The cartmen had the best of it, for them there were loud cheers. But the Emmets men intended, their goal would be defended. And they'd win before they'd ended, put the ball shell ears. Now the whistle it went shrill. And the Emmons got the wind, though the play not in their favour for fifteen minutes more. Six times and one goal, and that was the goal. I tell to you for certain that the cart men did score. For the bridge men got the ladder, and they all went down together. And shouts went from all Leinster, who have ended their careers. But the Emmets men expressing, saying we teach them a lesson, met two goals in succession for all chandeliers. The longer Cork remained, the more the bridge would beat them. Before they did defeat them, they were as swift as deers. Worn out, sad and dreary, and up forlorn, sad and dreary, worn out, weak and weary. Away went out a bow from the old chandeliers. So I'll give you the powers, George Sills and Pat Furlong, Pat Derricks and Bill Fortune for the driving force that day. Jack Leary and Will Doran, they were the boys for scorn. And so to one did golden for the old chandeliers. Our middle teeth seemed twice as strong. John Master and Bill Furlong, Jim Murphy and MacDonald were the boys that laid them low. 
For, uh, for every time that meet him, that put the cart men sleep him, he'd swear there was a waking, for no sign of life did show. Tom Murphy and Will Neville, they began to lay them level, and they told Tom the devil with his fish cap and shears. They first tried to win by morning, when they found the greens were scorn, and away like ancient corns from the old chalmeliers. There was Lar and Martin Lacey, Tom the Briggs and Aunt Daly, Bill Fogarty and Will Leary were best men of fame. George and Michael Brown played the ball fast up and down, and our captain Nicholas Daly, who played a hero's game. Now I've given you the twenty-one, with muscles, bone and sinew strong. I hope God will their days prolong for many, many years. With their MS costumes wearing, no heroes look more daring than the champions of all daring. Listening to the bark and the howl of a dove, or to wander through the green fields where the wild is his or to pluck the wild flower in the May morning Summer is coming. Ah, summer is near. With the leaves all so green and the sky bright and clear, and the little birds singing their loved ones too, and the wild fowl are springing. Be with the old folk who are now dead and gone. Likewise, my two brothers, young Dennis and John, as they trip through the heather, the wild hare to pursue, are the wild fowl they hunted in the May morn. The house I was born in is a stone on the stone. And all round its gardens wild thistles have grown. And all the kind neighbors that once I ever knew, like the wild fowl, have vanished. Oh, Father dear, I all times hear you speak the Pharaoh's eyes. Her lofty scenes, her valley green, her mountains look wild. They say it is a lovely land wherein a prince might dwell. So why did you abandon it? The reason to me tell. Oh, son, I love my native land with energy and pride. Till the blight came over of my crops, my sheep and cattle died. My rent and taxes were to pay, and I could not then redeem. And that's one cruel reason why I left old Skibbereen. Oh, well do I remember that bleak December day. The landlord and the sheriff came to drive us all away. They set our roof on fire with their cursed English flame, and that's when the 
another reason why I left those Italy. Your mother too, God rest her soul, fell on the snowy ground. She fainted in her anguish, seeing the desolation round. She never rose, but passed away to whom life to mortal dream. And that's the final reason why I left those Skibbereen. While you were only two years old and feeble was your frame, I could not leave you with my friends, you bore your father's name. So I wrapped you in my coat of more in the dead of night unseen. And he beside me and bade goodbye to the rose Kibberine. Oh, Father dear, the day will come when in answer to the call, each Irish man will rally stern and rally to the call. I'll be the man to lead the van beneath the flag of green. And loud of high a ring, I'll hear the cry, remember his giving. It was down by Carrick River, I carelessly did stray, where the hot horn and sweet briar, it would your heart do. Which 
your lofty hills and the waterfalls. It's them that I to make me feel at home and safe. I'd rather tread this moment the brown of autumn layer that makes a deepened carpet along her streamlets road. I'd rather be a strolling along the roads around the Rappo. There were 40 friends last evening received me the sun and wife, and I never felt so overfaced in all my mortal life. Instead of them, it'd make your head to ache. I wonder if the young ones know his aunt and would have fate. The way their lips are painted and their eyebrows straight with black. And should they have no hair upon their heads to hold a comb or rat. And some of them, you couldn't tell no difference from the boys. They kick up whole eruptions that made an awful noise. But if that's what they called enjoyment, it is something I'd forego, and I'd rather watch the rashman along the roads around that door. They ate their breakfast in their bed, and they called me done to be dinner for lunch. And if they're struck with a notion, they say, we've got a hunch. <laughs> they never seem to walk at all. They say they're a car or train. But I think they're all gone daft. To me, they seem insane. They gamble, sure, from morn till night and never count the cost. It is not one man to take a hand in honest rich and talk. And as for cards, the games that play, oh, man alive, you might as well ask for heaven in the game of those 25. They can't address you, they say. If they're friendly, they say, oh. Ah, the speaking is quite different along the roads around that road. <clears throat> well, those ones make bait the devil for making sport and fun. You should see them in their bed and rest and left in the sun. And though lad you should see you should see You see the capers are down with arms all wrinkled the bed. Now that's bit the difference for making sport and fun. They danced all night like young ones and never stopped in the four. And when the dance was finished, it was though lads showed up for more. So I am going now to see the sun. I think they're all gone mad, gone queer. I'm mither sick and sore. You never see an old town crowd like we did in days ago. So I'm going now to see the sun. The axes laid to go across the broad Atlantic, back to the roads around us. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I whisper what I'm thinking of. My cup runneth over with love. Shadows are deep 
I study the small things you do constantly. I memorize moments that I'm fondest of. Oh, my cup runneth over with love. Do be do, do be do. Stand up for the chorus now, though. <laughs> Sweet, fragrant, and gay were the dear days departed. It carries me back to the land of my dreams. When I was a young man, both gay and light-hearted, and cares came and went like a happy moonbeam. Oh, tis well that I know, and I'll always remember. That little hatch cottage in her fire aglow, the peace and goodwill and the month of December, and the old Sunday dinner a long time ago. Our table was set with the best we could boast of, and our bread was as light as the first fall of snow. There was plenty for twenty, and we made the most of the old Sunday dinner a long time ago. On Saturday night now, my father and mother would each go to market, but would not stay long, and I would be left in the care of my brother. And he, the poor fellow, would sing me a song. And when they returned, with baskets o'erflowing, we each get an apple and wanted to know what we have for dinner, what instead be thrown. About the hours on the dinner a long time ago. Our table was set with the best we could boast of, and our bread was as light as the first fall of snow. There was plenty for twenty, and we made the most of the old Sunday dinner a long time ago. Many years have gone by since I last saw that cottage. That sheltered my brothers, my sisters, and all. The fiddles, the flutes, the melodions were playing. It all seems so sad now, but nice to recall. But the old folk are gone, and the fiddles lie idle. No more on the hearthstone, the dancers will go. My brothers are scattered, but I'm sure they'll remember the old Sunday dinner a long time ago. Our table was set with the best we could boast of, and our bread was as light as the first fall of snow. There was plenty for twenty, and we made the most of. The old Sunday dinner a long time ago. Whisper Town, there is a place, a place called Ballybogan, and in that town two damsels dwell called.
Holland and see Hogan with me to Ray Palvilla, to Ray Palvilla, to Ray Palvilla, to Ray Palvilla. Now, Nancy bought a little pig and she hired me to mind it. And just like any other little pig, it carried its tail behind it with me to Ray Palvilla, to Ray Palvilla. Now, Nancy bought another pig. And the trouble was no wonder that in a week you couldn't tell these two little pigs asunder with me. Toraya, Fadilla, Toray, Fadillero. Two blackguards go on the road one day when these two little pigs were feeding, pulled out their knives, snagged off their tails, and sent them home all bleeding with me. Toraya, Fadilla. Now Nancy went to court for law Before her honour's glory Up stepped Mal to state the case And told her the whole story Now if your honour was a pig And if you couldn't steal off wouldn't you squeal and roar like any boar if blackguards cut your tail off with me? To ray a fallilla, to ray fallillero. Now Moll she died on Saturday night, and Paul she died on Sunday. We waked them both on Sunday eve, and we stuck them down on Monday with me. To ray a fallilla. To right from the narrow, to right, you right from the low, right, to right from the little narrow. Oh, my name is Dick Darby and Cobbler. I serve me time and they'll come. Some call me an old agitator, but now I'm resolved to repent. When the inkling, when the inkling, I know. An inkling of an inkling of an idea with me robo bo robo bo and me lost all keeps fading away. This forty long years I have travelled, all by the contents of me pack, me tools and me all and me hammer, I carry them all in me back. With the inkling of an inkling of an idea. With me inkling of an inkling of an idea, with me robo bo robo bo and me lost on his bed in the way. But me father was hung for sheep stealing, and me mother was burned as a witch, and me sister the dandy housekeeper, and I'm a mechanical switch. With me inkling of an inkling of an idea. With me inkling of an inkling of an idea, with me robo bo robo bo and me love so keeps fading away. Well, the wife sure she's humpy, she's lumpy. Well, the wife she's a devil, she's black. And no matter what I may do with her, her tongue it goes clickety clack. With me inkling of an inkling of an idea. With the inkling of an inkling of an idea, with me robo bo robo bo randy, and me lost all his bed in the way. It was early one fine summer's morning, quite early before break of day, that I dipped her three times in the river, and I carelessly fed her good bed. With me inkling of an inkling of an idea. With me inkling of an inkling of an idea, with me robo bo robo bo randy, and me lost so keeps fading away. Great. Well, Ben. When I was young and in my prime, here I courted Biddy McGee. She was a fine big strapping lump of a woman. Sure, she stood about two foot three. Now her father was a main old crater. He had plenty of gold in the land. Oh, but he reared up that rough, the dirty man, a rotten, old miserable devil. And I asked him for his daughter's hand. I resolved there and then for Biddy's sake that the two of us would be low. Sure, I 
borrowed a ladder from Mickey O'Brien and twenty yards of good strong strap and roll. Well, I put a ladder up to Molly's boudoir, and that's French for a woman's bed. <laughs> oh, but the ladder broke and the whole twenty stones came down on me bloody head. <laughs> Well, I chucked her into the ass and cart, and for the clergy we set out. We found Father Nagel in McCarthy's pub, with his head in a bucket of stout. Well, he looked at me with two bleary owl eyes, and sized Molly up and down. Oh, I pity me, son, and I would have looted by me two bottles of stout. I'd only charge you half a crown. <laughs> How do you take this fine big strapping woman and be a lawful wedded wife? And will you feed her on cabbage and bacon and spuds for the rest of her natural life? And when the Until last Tuesday fortnight, she said she was in the family way. Well, I chucked her into the Aston cart, and she landed like a sack. And I took her back to her father, and I said, Look, you dirty man, I've got no miserable devil. You can have uh, your daughter back. <laughs> <laughs> hey! The daughter of the village mayor is very fresh and very fair, a dazzling eye. It throws upon me such a spell that though my love I dare not tell, my heart is silent. She has this lovely brown chinish, that's the fact of the on a leash, while I have been one. A dog of doubtful pedigree, part pom or poke or chow it may be, but full of sting. The daughter of the village mayor would like to talk with me, I swear, in Horace Street Lingo. But parley vous, I find a bore, for I am British to the core, and so is Bingo. Yet just today, as we passed by, our dogs halted eye to eye, <coughs> friendly causes. Oh, how I hope tomorrow they will wag their tails in friendly play and rub their noses. Sad version. The daughter of the village mayor today gave me a frigid stare. My hopes are blighted. I'll tell you how it came to pass. Last evening in the village square, alas, my love I sighed. And as she started with her pet, her darling, her dainty folly, I cried, by jingle. Well, call it. Call it chance or call it fate. Well, call it chance or call it fate. I made a dash. Too late, too late. Oh, naughty bingo. <laughs> Dear daughter of the village mayor, that you'll forgive me is my prayer, and also bingo. You should have sheltered your niche. You saw my dogs then on his leash, and like a spring. They say that love will find a way. Well, it definitely did that day. <laughs> oh, canine news. Now it just re remains for me to wonder, will your offspring be Tom's Pokes or Pokes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not Tom, I don't get it.